All right, Dr. Huck, I just have a few questions you for you. Can I introduce you to the residents of Mayor Rose? First of all, where's your hometown? Rochester, Minnesota. Actually, I'm not a Minnesotan, though. I was born for one year, raised in Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Then the rest of my life in Minnesota. So we'll accept that. The fact that from Minnesota won't judge you then, I guess. <laughs> no. um, what are some of your hobbies? So my hobbies? Um, well, winter hobbies or summer hobbies? Well, what's, what do you like better, winter or summer, I guess? Uh, I like fall. Really enjoy fall. Only with fall. And uh, on the weekends, I'll be um, whiskey fishing or boating, or golfing. Um, I have an ATV, so I putz around some ATV trails. And then in the summer, it's um, mainly mountain biking and a uh, little golfing and things. In the winter, then it changes to skiing. I do skate skiing, cross country skiing, and uh, snowshoe. What's the biggest muskie you've ever caught? Uh, the biggest is a 47 inch that I caught last fall, but this fall it's one of my goals to beat that. Actually, um, I was faced with a tough decision a couple weeks ago. My best buddy asked me, he goes, what would you rather do, catch a, a 50 plus inch muskie or get a hole in one? While we were golfing, I was asked that question. And I said, if I want to get a chance at either, since I'm a golfer right now, the golf gods might be good to me, I'd say a hole in one. Uh, so yeah, I don't have a hole in one or a 50 be nice to do either. Well, it take you to land the big one, though. That must have been quite the fight. 47 was a good sized fish. I was by myself. Um, oh, and so it you was can't. So the fish, fish was really this big. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the, the best part of the story was, was the first cast of the night. Okay. And um, I raced up from work, got up north, which is by Boulder Junction. Mm -hmm. At about 5.15, I got my first cast in. Waves are almost breaking over the boat. About 45 degrees out and uh, caught it on the first cast. And then um, it was a struggle. Landed it, got a few pictures of my cell phone, didn't do it justice. So nobody really believed cell phone me. Never does. No. <clears throat> if you could travel anywhere outside the United States, where would you go? It's a good question. I've been privileged to travel a few different places. Uh, I would recommend going to Australia. I studied abroad there during my undergraduate work. And um, I probably saw more of Australia than I have of the U.S. I uh, absolutely loved it and uh, went to Norway and Sweden and Finland. So I got the Scandinavian countries in and that was a great trip. <coughs> but uh, if I could go anywhere now, I would love to take a, like a ATV or Hummer tour of Iceland. And just like really? get into camping and um, just getting all over the landscape. I heard it's some of the rarest looking landscape in, in the world. And, um, Never thought about going that simply. Well, when I when I that flew to nice. Australia, we took the long way around the world. Oh, okay. Uh, it was a cheaper flight, and I don't know. So we went uh, we went to Iceland, it was Reykjavik, and then we went to Singapore. No, we went to Amsterdam and Singapore, and then Perth. So we went <coughs> the long way around the world. It was thirty five hour flight. Well, you, you hit all the highlights then. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> I didn't get to leave the airport. I was in each airport for oh. a couple hours. Well, that's no fun at all. I know. So when I saw Iceland, I wanted to get back there. But South America would be cool. That's on my to-do list. Um, any one particular country, I, I kind of want to do. You just want to hit them all. I, that's the beauty of being a professor is if you don't teach during the summer and you have a little money saved, you can go do something like that. Mm -hmm. So, what is one thing you want to accomplish in your lifetime? Like your biggest goal. Biggest goal. Don't say retirement because eventually you will. Eventually, yeah. Retirement would be a big one. Um, I do retire. That's the other good thing about teaching is you could always, if you're passionate about it, you could always do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I know some professors at the University of Minnesota that still do it at mid to late 70s. Wow. I'm sure there might even be a few here. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, to be honest with you, I'm, you know, I have strong family morals and values, so it would probably be just serve them oh, yeah. someday. Um, that, I think that's probably more important than any career goal that I can think of. Um, when you were growing up, who did you look up to? Was it a family member? Was it a public figure? Somebody in your imagination? So who's your biggest influence growing up? Well, I wish I could say, a, you know, a president or something, but we didn't have too many good 
role models of Bill Clinton and, and uh, the Bushes, but uh, I would have to say it was probably my father, and um, it was probably his work ethic okay. that I looked up to the most. It just He worked hard, and he was passionate about succeeding and you know, obtaining success, and mm -hmm. I, try, I strive to be the same way. Okay. Um, so so you went to the University of Minnesota, correct? For my master's, yep. Master's. Where did you go to your undergraduate? St. John's University. It's a small school that's affiliated with St. Benedict's, which uh, it's in uh, by St. Cloud, Minnesota. It's actually called oh, okay. Collegeville. And um, the two schools, you know, you take classes, neither one. Mm -hmm. They're across the interstate from each other. And yeah. the guys have dorms on one side and the girls have dorms on the other. Well, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so a combined population of maybe 4,000 students. Well, wow, that's really small. Yeah. Wow. Combined. And they just decided to put the interstate right through it, or there were individual schools on the other side? You know, I think they were individual schools, and then they figured since they're so close, they'll join them. Okay. Yeah. Um, what made you choose your field of study? Uh, that's a good question. I think I... I was pre-med because I really was fascinated about how the body works when I was growing up. More so than plants or mm -hmm. you know any other field, and um, so I went pre med when I was in college, and then I realized I liked more about nutrition and exercise than I did, you know, um, what types of drugs to use to help people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what medicine is is understanding how you know drugs will treat a disease or help prevent a disease. And, I'm more about natural prevention and treatment, so I really focus on nutrition, exercise, and lifestyles. And, um, so musky fishing is a way to live a long life, then? <laughs> I wouldn't say that's it, but it, I guess throwing big lures could give you some exercise. There you go. There you go. Which reminds me, I've always wanted to do that study, look at how many calories you burn while musky fishing, but you know, it could differ based on you know, how vigorous you're casting, mm -hmm. yeah, and how long you do it. And it depends whatever. what kind of lure you're using to What kind of lure, what kind of rod, yeah. But anyway. Wow, oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Future research rod right there. Um, so, I mean, you're a professor, obviously. Um, but what classes do you all teach? Well, I, I teach... I just give me a, <coughs> a very basic. Uh, I do not teach any... Um, classes that freshman or sophomore would take anymore. Um, I did teach Healthy American last year. HPW 102. Yeah, yeah which was uh, I had that with you. a phenomenal GDR. <laughs> it, 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 it is what it is. It's a, it's a wellness um, oriented class that gives you your GDR and there are over 300 students per section. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to have a I don't know. Uh, it's hard for students to get a lot out of a class when there's that many students in there, and they really don't take much ownership to learning anything. But some do. Some. So anyway, I, I teach exercise physiology, um, exercise programming for special populations, which is mainly seniors before they take their internships. Um, a lot of health promotion, physical education, pre-occupational therapy, pre-physical therapy, some dance majors. Really? Uh, yeah, they take the exercise related classes. Nutrition. Of course. Majors take some exercise classes. Uh, people who get into strength conditioning. So there, you know, there's quite a few different programs that take exercise physiology. And the next spring, I teach a new course I haven't taught before. It's uh, Food Nutrition 151, which is like an introduction course. It's also a GDR for wellness degree. Oh, all right. So you're getting back one. to teaching lower level students. So. I I like to teach all levels, and so every once in a while, when there's an opening, I'll try to fill that opening. Plus, I I feel like um, you know, you can touch more minds when you have those larger classes. It might not be the most effective way to get people <laughs> to yeah. change their lifestyles or their habits, but if you can get ten people to change. You can change ten people's lives out of 150. What's well, not bad? This, yeah, it's not bad. Especially as the classes in CC, CCC 101. 
which yeah. you have a class in CC 101, it's hard to... The, this particular class is in um, CPS 116, which is a little small. Yeah, it's still a lot, still the big lecture hall. Still a big lecture hall, yeah. 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 Um, what, are, what else are you involved in on campus besides teaching? Are you doing any research projects? Do you advise any, anything else? Uh, yep. Um, just was elected the, the health promotion and wellness uh, coordinator. So anyone who, um, any students who declare health promotion wellness as their degree, our whole um, program has like seven professors in it. And right now I'm, I was nominated the duty of kind of heading up that unit. So that, it counts as service work. I mean, it's, it's a lot of work in organizing that. But alongside of that, I'm working on a grant. Um, uh, helping evaluate an after-school program for children who are at risk for disease. A lot of them are struggling with childhood obesity. Some of them uh, are coming from families that are either broken families or families that don't promote healthy lifestyles. And so some of them are at pretty serious risk. That just started up today, that program. And uh, so this week we, we have baseline measurements on their fitness. And then at the end of the program, which is eight weeks later, we retest them on their fitness again to see yeah. the improvements. Yeah. This is part of a $3 million grant that was funded by the National Institute of Health. And um, it's, it's um, being piloted in Wood County, because Wood County has the highest rates of childhood obesity in the state. And then if things go well and the program looks promising, then they're going to try to implement this after-school program in various counties around the state. So that's what's taking up a lot of my time, probably like, I don't know, anywhere from 12 to 20 hours a week. Make sure it doesn't feel like that makes time to relax. Right, it won't interfere with the fishing. I still get maybe 68 hours of fishing, which isn't a lot, but... This is kind of a two-fold question. First of all, why did you come to the UWSP, and what do you like about it? Like, is there something really that sets UWSP apart? You know, the students who are never at a large university don't really know this perspective, but I'll say it anyway. Um, at a small university, you can feel like you can make a difference. Mm -hmm. At a large university, you just feel like a small fish in a big pond. And 